Timber rattlesnakes are ambush predators. That venom is what they use to stop prey, to immobilize it, to kill it. They don't constrict, they can't constrict, they're not particularly quick moving, so their weapon of choice is venom. working our way down here into a bottomland through some pretty thick stuff and we're on this little trek in search of a rattlesnake. Timber rattlesnakes are often associated with sunny, sparsely wooded ridgetops and slopes, but they spend a surprising amount of time in wet bottomlands. The humid conditions can help them shed, but sometimes they enter these dense, shady habitats in search of prey. So this here is what we've been looking for. We've had to walk a long way to find this snake, but this is Hrothgar. This is a timber rattlesnake we've been tracking for a while. Now, what we see Hrothgar doing here is he's actually hunting. He's trying to catch a meal. Timber rattlesnakes are ambush predators. That venom is what they use to stop prey, to immobilize it, to kill it. They don't constrict, they can't constrict, they're not particularly quick moving, so their weapon of choice is venom. Timber rattlesnakes feed on small mammals that are quick, alert, and quite capable of outrunning a heavy-bodied viper. So the snakes choose a different strategy, ambush. Fallen logs form a sort of highway system for small mammals as they move through the forest, allowing them to travel for quite some time without ever actually touching the ground. This strategy may have its advantages, but rattlesnakes have learned to exploit it. Timber rattlesnakes coil and wait for their prey along logs that are used frequently by small mammals, and they can identify these logs by using their tongue to smell the scent trails left behind by these mammals. They often position their chin against the log, which likely helps them feel the vibrations of their approaching prey. The snake may remain motionless for hours, waiting for potential prey to come along. At close range, their heat-sensitive pits help ensure their strike is accurate. Once their prey unwittingly wanders close enough, the snake strikes out and in the blink of an eye injects a lethal dose of venom. The prey runs off and typically dies somewhere nearby. The snake then uses its tongue to track down the dead or dying prey and swallow it whole. A large meal like a squirrel or even a chipmunk can add quite a bit of bulk to a snake and may even affect their ability to move. But such a meal will also last them for weeks or even months meaning they may only need a few successful hunts each year. If you find it hard to root for snakes when their prey is small, furry, and cute, remember that these are important predators in many ecosystems and that by eating the rodents, they not only help control the population, but they may also play a role in regulating disease and parasites. Since snakes swallow food whole, any parasites like ticks will be swallowed and digested as well. Researchers have estimated that a healthy population of timber rattlesnakes could remove 2,500 to 4,500 ticks every year from a forest. This could, in turn, play a small role in reducing the spread of Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses. Though top-level predators, like a timber rattlesnake, may sometimes be intimidating to us, they are critical components of a healthy ecosystem. It's difficult to know what we would lose in their absence, but a diverse ecosystem is a healthy one, and a healthy ecosystem is better for everyone.